welcome back to Contrastly. My name is Simon Plant and today we're going to be looking at workflow and archiving. So first of all I want to apologise for my very croaky voice. We've had a few viruses here in the Plant household and my wife has kindly passed it on to me. Much better now but still struggling with the old voice but uh, the show must go on so I'm going to give it my best, uh, best shot of getting through this video. Today we're going to work uh, through looking at workflow and archiving. Not the most exciting video you might think, but it is certainly is one of the most important videos to cover. Nothing worse than having loads and loads of images on your hard drive and not being able to find them. Worse still is losing images. So today I said we're going to look at the way I use a workflow to safeguard my images and also to be able to find them when needed. So as I said, this is just my workflow. There's lots and lots of different workflows that people use. I'm going to show you show you my workflow and, how and why I use use it the way I do and why I think it's a good way of working. But you can adapt this any way you want. Uh, some of the things I'm going to show you in this video and possibly the next, you may think is a little bit over the top and a little bit crazy. And that might be the case, but it's the way I'm happy uh, about storing my images and hopefully will stop me from losing anything so uh, not set in stone it's open to interpretation but it's the way uh, I'm going to show you that I do things first thing I'm going to do is come out of a Lightroom and just start off very very simple by simply how I would import my images into a folder structure now a folder structure is literally that just a folder here's a sample of one I've already had set up and inside it's got a load of other subfolders so for instance I'll, I'll have a folder which I'll show you how I name that in a moment and inside there'll be a, dis oops, to be a description folder and inside there will be another set of folders and they will might control might contain my master files so my PSD files and stuff that is layered and um, then be my finished pictures in another folder and more importantly a folder with all my camera raw files so the very base level you could have three folders I go a bit further sometimes I'll have movie folders then maybe web proofs that are sent to a client and then there may be some JPEGs I don't actually use all these anymore uh, this has evolved a little bit and I'll show you the folders that I do use in a second so the very basic level you can set up a folder like that as a master folder and copy it and every time you import your images you've got that folder structure ready to go another way of doing it is to use a bit of software and the way I the reason I use this software this is called post haste is that it actually I can set it up to add the date to my folder structure um, and uh, the reason I do that is and I'll show you in a second is that it's, it's another way without using Lightroom or any kind of cataloging software it's a quick way of finding your images on a hard drive now post haste is free you can download it and you simply just set it up uh, the way you want it and click create project and it will instantly add a folder onto your desktop or wherever, wherever you want to want to store it if I just try and open this thing and it's here ready set up with my date now the reason I use dates is very simple if I want to go into a, into um, a, a hard drive full of images okay and I don't want to open up any software like I said like Lightroom I can I can go into my uh, folder of finished camera files and let's say I know that I'm looking for a folder uh, of Christmas pictures I've done over Christmas I can go in find say 2011 the year find the month which would be December and then find the date the 24th so that's Christmas Eve 2011 click on there and there's all my images there of the Santa special which I took my kids on at that uh, 2011 so that is a very quick way uh, of finding a folder if you can remember the rough date of the rough year you can quickly go through these and find the appropriate month year etc without having to do anything else so that's the first way of narrowing down your images that you're looking for if you can remember the year 
and they're roughly the month. Now you'll all also notice as well as the date, I've got um, a job number. So I've got J, stands for job, uh, 0000, which is obviously a, a four digit number. Um, so how I do this is if it's personal work, I don't apply a job number. So for this this one, for instance, it's J0000 dash and then P-E-R-S, I have a four, uh, a four letter um, uh, um, description on the end. So this tells me that it's a personal work, okay? If it's a job, then I have a job number, which also obviously is in sequence, uh, followed by another abbreviation for the client. So this, so uh, this one here is YCST. That is a client that I work for called the Yeovil Town Community Sports Trust, which is like a charity, football charity. Um, I've also got um, this one here, MKYD, um, which stands for the Monk Shard, which is another client that I do a bit of work for. So all these um, mean something to me. And another way, quick way of me finding uh, images. So if I know that I've done some work for the Monk Shard, I know I'm looking for that last uh, those last four letters MKYD. Another quick way of finding stuff, okay? Um, and followed also by a job number. And you can also put these into a separate database, like an Excel spreadsheet with a description, uh, if you find that that's helpful. So that's again another way of quickly finding the images you look for. So, if you did nothing else apart from what I've just showed you, you'd already be in a better position for finding images on your hard drive. Because if you're shooting a lot, you can quickly build up a huge amount of, of images. And if you're not naming them or, um, in, or put them into proper folders like this, it's just going to make life a lot more difficult. And there's nothing worse than su suddenly realizing this six months, 12 months, two years down the line and having to go through the whole lot again. I've been there and I've done it. So it's good to get this sort of thing in place as soon as possible. Um, going down a little bit further, drilling down a bit further, if I open uh, the one of these folders and click on it, you'll see... Uh, we've got a little description there, the first folder of what the images contain, and then underneath that, obviously, we've got my folder structure. Um, if we go open up the camera raw folder or any of these folders, um, that naming, uh, the way I've named the, those folders, uh, uh, rings through again. So each image now has the date again, the job number, the client, but then added on the end of that is another four digit number followed by the file type so this is .dng um, if I go into uh, I don't know if there's any in here or not then yeah you've got the same again but it's .jpg okay so that carries on again so I know from looking at any, any individual file where that uh, where that image comes from so again the date job number the abbreviation for the client but then followed by the four digit file number followed by the file type which in this case is a DNG so hopefully that makes sense again it's just helping keep images in the right folders and if they get fragmented or maybe this gets moved out of a folder for any reason um, and stored somewhere else I can quickly find where that image belongs by the date and the job number and the client number so before we finish up, I just want to show you um, a drive full of images that I've worked on that I've kind of finished with. Uh, so these are stored on an external hard drive and we'll go into more of the kind of the archiving and safeguarding of the images perhaps in the next video. Um, so this is a folder again. I, I know it's a personal work because of my uh, file naming. Um, I've opened it up and then I've got a description folder. Uh, and this, one says, this one says Taramalinos. Costa del Sol, Spain, family holiday. So I know it's a family holiday in Spain. And again, inside there are a load of subfolders. Here's my camera raw folders. Again, same naming convention, so I can I can track it track it back to that job folder. And followed by uh, the uh, file number of the file. So it's 001, 002, 003, etc., 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 for as many images that I've shot on that job.
okay those are the raw files at the camera raw files if I go back uh, uh, back away I can um, I can then go in say to my uh, masters folder here and here it changes slightly the images that I'm working on which is the layer file sometimes I will leave if it's just one image I'm working on at that folder I'll sometimes leave it again with the job number and the uh, the file number 282 and dot PSD I know that's a layered file sometimes I'll work on multiple different versions so sometimes I will break them down and I'll actually give them a description name so that one's called master contentment which is the the name um, that I gave to the image and then um, this one is a slightly different variation and then I've got other elements that sometimes I'll use as a composite so sometimes I will rename those a description uh, to help me find them in that folder but generally that's how I work all numbered with a date with a description and a job number and that makes my life a lot easier in the next video we're going to look at how we might use uh, something like Lightroom and how we ingest the images into Lightroom how I keyword them so that I can find them easier within a database and uh, then eventually we'll then look at how to then archive those onto various different media including hard drives um, the, and the cloud as well which is something fairly new to me in the last 12-18 months I've started to use so I hope this video has given you a bit of food for thought as I said you don't have to copy the way I work but um, hopefully it'll give you a few ideas of how you can adapt it to your own needs and uh, as I said in the next video we'll continue with the uh, with the uh, workflow and uh, the archiving and how to safeguard your images so thanks for watching and I hope to catch you again soon